Ronald, you have a very strong background in the financial sector, asset management, deposit trading. As far as I understood, can you tell us something about your experiences? For how long did you work there? Well, my experiences are more complicated than what you mentioned just now. Actually, I have been an entrepreneur my entire life. Independence being the key component to me. I have once tried being an employee, but that didn't work out. Being an entrepreneur, I have seen many sectors, amongst which I have experienced the financial world. All my other companies as an entrepreneur, like my own fashion line for ladies, car dealership and also import-export, had me involved to such an extent with building up my own fortune, it inherently guided me into the world of finance. Working in import-export, you encounter different currencies and you have to go to the exchange to trade through brokers. And one of the brokers said at some point, Ronald, I've been looking at your life for a long time and you are always busy. You earn money, we know, but what is your goal? And I replied, the only goal I have as an entrepreneur is to earn as much money as I possibly can. Because, the more money I have, the quicker I can retire, be free and of course have status. Basically everything you want in this society or at least, that's what I thought back then. So the broker said, in that case, stop what you are doing now, stop with all those companies and just start dealing money, go into the financial world. And that is the beginning of that situation that is connected to your original question. The broker had a place in the exchange market and he dealt in currencies, deposits, so trading in assets to make money out of differences in interest rates and that involved the aforementioned asset management. Those three aspects together formed the interested package I said yes to. He said, all right, you can take my place here, I'll train you introduce you into the network, but in exchange I want 10% of your annual earnings. So he basically sold me his spot in the financial world and asked a 10% commission which I paid him. I said, yes, fine with me. Then he replied, there is one thing you need to know, if you can't put your conscience in the proverbial freezer, and I don't mean on minus 18 degrees, but on minus 100 degrees, then don't get involved in this. That was the message, you want a lot of money, you can obtain that, I can help you, but it comes at a great cost. Because you cannot do this with a clear conscience. Well, I laughed at that, I was young and naive. From my youth, from the way I came into life, my far from ideal youth led me to develop a certain view of the world and humanity. What do you mean by that? No warm, loving family? My mother always did the best she could to make us feel loved. But she was hampered by that due to the behavior of my father who caused us to feel more like we lived in a war zone with each other. That isn't an exemplary situation to grow up in. And as a child growing up like that, led me to believe that the world and humanity are far from great. So putting your conscience in the freezer was fitting in as a starting point? I was partially already used to doing that out of self-preservation. So to put my conscience in the freezer was not an impossible task to me. So it became a survival mechanism to you? Yes, yes. And my view of humanity and the world around me wasn't exactly positive either. I only thought of myself, that the way I grew up to be out of self-preservation and I got into that deal. 
which meant that slowly I build up a customer base. And as I improved my skills within the network, I got deeper into the financial world. And then it turns out the world is really small and you keep noticing that. Even when I was still working in import-export dealing in grain and such, you notice it is just a small circle. And if we talk about the hardcore circle in the financial world, I don't mean Miss Jean at the bank but the big global flows of money which you use for trading. You are talking about worldwide cash flows, so not the Netherlands in particular where you started working? The Netherlands do play a distinct part in this story but the world does not revolve around it. The Netherlands are a part of a large global financial system in which you work through exchange mark if you want to do official transactions. And many banks, who do the currency exchange, get certain assignments from clients, which they can't get away with easily. Then the need arises for people like me, to with the straw men where big money flows are involved. We used certain financial constructions, international legislation, to move money in such a way making everything okay. So all supervisors, regulatory bodies that are in place worldwide, because they are that no one wakes up seeing what is going on, like a year or two ago, with the scandal around Panama. The Panama Papers? Yes. Tax evasion. I think, well that was about avoiding taxes, tax evasion is when you break all the rules. This had to do with avoiding. But when you see what happened there, I'm like guys that is old news. And who are you bring with that because it is peanuts and hardly relevant. However, for the common people, that is great news, but it is not anything big, but it does show, there is something very wrong in this world. For example, there are people in the Netherlands, with certain positions, who have bank accounts in Panama, with legislation that allows them not to pay taxes in the Netherlands, which is completely legal. Constructions like that were part of my job. When we had to change currency, we had changes, the first boycotts in Iraq in the early 90s, when there was a boycott in Iraq because of the war that started there. And we were confronted with what we called Iraqi dollar. Iraqi dollars, which were actually American dollars. The American dollar has a direct relation to the oil prices which made it a world trading currency backed up by oil. As long as that connection is in place, the dollar has a value. Officially, the Iraqi people weren't allowed to sell their oil due to the boycott. In theory that is, because never before there was such a big business in oil. With discounts in this case, because officially it wasn't allowed, so with discounts it still crossed the borders. These dollars, because the energy was always paid in the dollars, so the Iraqi dollars had to go somewhere. You couldn't just take them to the desk at the bank because of all the regulations and checks did provide a certain protection. Because money laundering and criminality wasn't anything new back then, now we call it terrorism. But that was then also the case. So, then you need people to take the heath. As straw men, you got invited to a bank, for example, in Germany's, with basements full of trucks filled with money. And then you think, sure. 
Truck, transports, a busy company. Come with me, then they show you they are all filled to maximum capacity with dollars. And they tell you we need to get rid of all this cash. So change them pounds, German marks, this, that, in such way and it needs to go there and there. Are we now talking about money laundering? Well, processing cash. Processing cash in such a way that we can legally reintroduce it into the money circuit. So that was your task? That was an assignment my colleagues and I got. You are never alone on an assignment, because you cannot do this on your own. It is not possible. We all know Scrooge McDuck scooping money with his shovel, well we literally had to do that over there. It was impossible to process all at once. So, then you need to find a way. Cash used to be the predominant way of paying, where nowadays most is digital. But you tried to find a way to process the cash. How do you reintroduce the cash into the circuit so Iraq can deal in its soil without being hampered? Because they are the ones that own the money. Iraq doesn't want. Look, you mentioned money laundering, but what it was about the boycott, Iraq had to stick to the rules, and buy, you know, everything you want to know about the world. You can know by following the money. That is the bottom line. Everyone can say blah, 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 but make sure you follow the money, then you'll find the truth. Same thing goes for that situation. So the only thing Iraq and their buying partners wanted, was to remain free of any accusations. Because the partners who bought it were the ones placing the boycott in the first place but they are actually all friends on the same side. Everybody thinks there are opposites like good and bad guys in the world. But on the higher levels, it is just a game and they are all working together. However, they do have to stick to the rules and regulations, they themselves have created to keep the rest of society suppressed and make sure that it will not be too crowded at the top. So you have to play by your own rules. So what is going on there, is to make sure that nobody can trace you, apart from the elite themselves. Nobody in lower ranks can find out what really happened. Compartmentalized, that's how we call it. Yes. Everyone knows only his own little piece. Only the elite knows what is happening. Yes, but because we were doing the dirty work, we had to know a lot because we couldn't afford to make any mistakes. How high in the pyramid did you get? Were you close to the top of the pyramid? Well, we were communicating with them. My ego would have loved it when I got to this position of belonging to the top itself. Nowadays we still talk about 8,000 to 8,500 people in the world who run the entire world. It would have been amazing to get into such a position back then. All right, but if we say the top knows 100%, can you estimate how much you knew and understood of what happened? In my work, I had to know 100% of what was going on. There was no other way, because of the interests of the people involved were huge. Especially for the top. If I wouldn't know all the details, I would end up making mistakes. Which would cause a spin-off, because those mistakes would be detected. Then the people that don't know anything about it would interfere. We are talking about having nerves of steel to function at this level. So did you have nerves of steel? Yes, it worked just fine. The freezer worked very well for you. Yes, I played at the highest level for about five years. And then it was totally over, out and done with. That was a very intense moment for me. That happened suddenly? Well, no the thing is, I gave a small example of what was involved. 
So, in this case, currency exchange, dollar to something else, deposited in a safe manner, and managing assets well, so it could grow to rate of return, leading to reinvestments with the money. The level I played it in those five years, and that didn't happen overnight, you need to earn your place. I am skilled at connecting the dots, information in order to achieve a full picture of all the things involved. That need to be taken into account within the playing field. Which is a very detailed process. You stand out when you are gifted in this. This is the reason I was trusted with the full 100% of the information where it concerned my jobs. So, I didn't know about everything they knew, but everything that I needed to know regarding the case I was working with colleagues, I was often put in the leading role, because I kept a good overview of the situation. You're good at making quick switches. Yes, and I was good at innovative thinking to solve the problem. I had fun, creating solutions in such a way to always stay ahead and outsmart them. Staying within the rules of the game but playing around with them to make everything match up. I love that game. However, on the other hand you had a great amount of responsibility and you learned more and more about the real world. Since through the financial world you learn all of the actual truth. So you say all, in what regard? Well your clients give you glimpses of how the world really works. In hindsight, I still didn't know everything. But I did know a lot, because my clients were banks who didn't want blood on their hands, but within those banks there always is a number of people who know damn well what is going on. So, like 1% within a bank knows the truth of the matter regarding the happenings within the world, which is not surprising, considering they are involved in the flows of money. Those are your clients. You also have governments to deal with, multinationals, you have to deal with secret services, and what they now call terrorist organizations. You get all of the groups that are involved with the big money as clients. Then you start seeing the connections, so, they might be compartmentalized as you just mentioned, regarding knowledge. But because I am in the middle I see how they relate to another. You see the money coming from this place then going to that place, etc. You keep gaining information and thereby, an overview of what is really going on. So do you have to serve and keep all of those groups happy, including terrorist organizations? You were trying to keep everybody happy? Yes. My God. That was my job. Keeping all the balls in the air. Yes, indeed, so one of the things that I found out, I did not know that before, but now am I do, is about secret services. You think they are there to serve and protect a people, country, etc. But they actually turn out to be the criminal organizations, to be more precise, the system is heavily so. We are talking about financing wars, creating wars, so basically creating a lot of misery in this world. So, lots of conflict. And then I think to myself, if only people knew what the world is really like, secret services will stop at nothing. Nothing. But they also have their flows of money, because if they are trading in drugs or weapons or, for that matter, people, all that money has to go somewhere. Everything has to be financed. You say if, but you could confirm they are doing this? All of them? All of them? So the entire world as we think we know it, is just an illusion we believe in which is something you find out in this line of work and where it all went wrong for me, to put it that way. Right, you mean, finally that is. In hindsight, yes it was for the best but, my freezer started to malfunction. 
there were things happening. For example I went to a different trade market and one of my colleagues there said, Ronald, you remember that case with the Italian lira? I sometimes mention that during talks as well. Do you remember those deals, in which we did massive dumping of the lira, which reduced the value of the currency? which caused a company in Italy to be hit in such a way, they went bankrupt. And then you hear at the exchange, you remember that successful deal with the lira? Yes. And then they say, did you know that the owner committed suicide and left a family behind? Things like that. And back then we laughed at it. Altogether, all of us. We looked down on people, mocked them, it was just a product, waste, everything was worthless trash, nature, the planet, everything could burn and break. Just useless parasites. Just as long as we met our goals, as long as we were growing, many of my colleagues ended up drinking or using drugs. Not me, maybe I should have. Or not. No, in hindsight, it was for the best and I'm happy to still be alive. However, all those horrible things started to eat at me. Can you give an example, because I can sense a lot of terrible things happen to you? Yes, it is difficult for me to talk about. I can feel that, but only whatever you wish to share is all right. Yes, I only talk about things I want to tell, but it does evoke lots of emotions and with my conscience not being in the freezer, it touches me deeply. Yes, I feel the same way. All right. Can you tell me the worst thing that has happened that caused the tipping point in your situation? Well that was the beginning of the end, you get so deep into these circles. And you sign a lifetime contract, not with blood or anything, to never disclose names of companies, organizations or people. I think that is why I am still alive, you have to stick to it. If we are talking about the worst things that I have experienced, I just told you about things that made the freezer glitch, my conscience started to show itself. Let's put it this way, I was training to become a psychopath and I failed, I did not complete the training and didn't become a psychopath, my conscience came back and the most difficult part for me was, because I had such a great status there, I was a success, I was trusted with the people playing at this level. Mensen in deze wereld die dus op dat niveau speelden. Um, ik moet ook zeggen dat to put it carefully, most of these people followed not very mainstream religion. So, you have Catholics, Protestants, all sorts of religions. These people, most of them, were Luciferians. And then you can say, religion is a fairy tale, God doesn't exist. None of that is real, well, for these people, it is truth and reality, and they served something immaterial, what they called Lucifer. And I also was in contact with those circles, only I laughed at it because to me they were just clients. So, I went to places called churches of Satan. So now we are talking about Satanism. Yes. So, I visited these churches, just as a visitor, dropped by, and then they were doing their holy mass with naked woman and liquor and stuff. And it just amused me. I didn't believe in any of this stuff, and was far from convinced if any of this was real. It was just a spectacle to you. Yes. In my opinion, the darkness and evil is within the people themselves. I didn't make the connection yet. So I was a guest in those circles and it amused me greatly to see all those named women and the other things. It was the good life. But then at some point, I was invited, which is why I'm telling you all this, to participate in sacrifices abroad.
Dat was het breekpunt. That was the breaking point. Kinder. Children. You were asked to do that? Yes. And I couldn't do that. Would you like to stop for a moment by the way? No. And then I started to slowly break down. I lived through quite a lot as a child myself and this really touched me deeply. Everything changed. But that is the world I found myself in. And then I started to refuse assignments within my job. I could no longer do it. Which made me a threat. I was no longer capable of functioning optimally. My performance started to shake and I had refused tasks. I had not participated. The purpose of the whole thing, eventually, in that world, is that they have everybody in their pocket. You need to be susceptible to blackmail. And blackmailing me proved to be very hard if I look back on it. They wanted to do that through those children. And that broke me. Is that, you are not telling me something new, what they also do in politics? If you Google this, you'll find enough worldwide witness accounts to know this isn't a Walt Disney fairy tale. Unfortunately, the truth is, that worldwide they have been doing this for thousands of years. I once studied theology and even in the Bible you find references to these practices with Israelites. The reason the first ten tribes were banished to Babylonia was because of these rituals with children, including the sacrificing of children, so this is pertinent, all this made me believe, because I realized there was more to life than meets the eye, there is a whole invisible world, it is real, you really do talk about a dark force and a manifestation of light. So, I resorted to studying theology to make sense of it all. And psychology as well if I remember correctly? Yes, but that I did in my first life, because through commercial psychology, mass psychology, I was able to manipulate situations for my own benefit. That is scary, because if you dig into that you find Tavistock Institute and Mind Control, MKUltra, Monarch and the like. Yes, that is correct but that was all part of the job. Through training at the job, I got into that more deeply, because when you are making deals, you also need to manipulate the media. You have to manipulate lots of things because nothing can be seen as it is. Everything has to appear to be something different. You see the people as a flock of sheep. You put a couple of border collies and drive them in a direction. And to be honest with you, I still see that happening around me. People are still, through the systems and methods that we ourselves use to use, being treated in that same way and it still works. People still don't understand how it really works and are still on the level of as long as I have my beer and whatever, completely self-absorbed, also a survival mechanism, I mean it is the program after all. But you still see how stupidly easy it is to put people in a certain direction, when you are the one pulling the strings that is... Mass psychology. Yes, and later, much later, in all those studies and discoveries, I found a document which they are claiming is bullshit of course, the Protocols of Zion. And nowadays I recommend everyone to read the whole of that incredibly boring document, just work through it, read it though. We are also talking about Zionism. Yes, of course. If you read the Protocols of Zion, and really study them and understand, then it is like reading the newspaper of the daily life. How from their position of ultimate power, and ultimate it has literally become.
But that is only because the people don't stand up for themselves. They don't realize what reality is. And we have all been programmed, if you dare to say you are against Zionism, then you are branded an anti-Semite. The negative, you can say evil, the Luciferians, the Satanists, whatever you wish to call it, it is a real entity. I have found that what is written in the Bible, and not just the Bible, you can find it in so many books. There really has been a moment of separation from the manifestation of light, in which a group went their own way and are carrying an intense hatred, anger. The people who do not underestimate the severity of this are but few. Because this is an all-annihilating force that hates our guts, it hates creation, it hates life, and it will do anything to destroy us completely. And the way to do that is to divide humanity. Divide and conquer is their truth. Humanity is a manifestation of light, that is the true creation. As long as you divide them based on political parties, skin color, you name it, then you, from a Luciferian point of view that is, suppress the full capacities of your enemy, their full power. They can't stand up for themselves, because if that would happen, the Luciferians would lose. Then this monster, the greedy monster would disappear. I tell people about this old American general who puts an entire room of people in the dark. The eyes adapt to the darkness, but you can't see a thing. The general doesn't say a word and suddenly he flicks on a lighter, one little light. And due to the prolonged darkness, you experience a manifestation of light from a single point and everyone can slightly see each other again. And then he says, that is the power of our light. Beautiful. Unite. Unite. Come together. And this entire shit story ceases to exist. That's how fast it could happen. But that is easy for me to say now. But then I was in a period of my life in which I was crumbling down. Could you tell us something specific about that? How did that happen? Because you were invited. I started to refuse assignments. My conscience came back after the request involving the children and I started to refuse more and more. I had a conscience and I couldn't function anymore. But you did still show up at work after that? I didn't really have a choice. I had my own business with several offices and employees. Everything was still rolling. It must have been hard. Yes, it got very hard, all the tensions. So, on the one hand you are playing with money on a high level, in which you can't afford to make mistakes. Otherwise everything falls down at once. Your entire business is ruined, everybody involved, including yourself. Then you are really screwed. So that brings a lot of stress, factoring in the resurfacing of a conscience. I was warned off when I got into this, don't do it if you can't put your conscience at minus 100 degrees in the freezer. And you probably realized that then? Yes, I heard myself laugh at it back then, but it wasn't a joke at all. I totally did not understand where I really got into. And your proverbial freezer was switched off? Broken. I couldn't do it anymore. So, I tried to work through it, keep up appearances. I didn't know how to get out of this. I was trapped as well. Everybody was trapped. This all led me to crash completely eventually. My body just simply stopped. The first thing I saw was my mother crying at the intensive care. You ended up at the IC? Yeah, I really shut down. You had literally crashed? Yes, yes. At that time I didn't believe in anything, not I can still recall how I saw, 
from that corner, I was looking down upon myself, I saw how they were working on me. You had a near-death experience. Well you could call it that. I have seen I am not my body. I'm in my body. But I am not just my body. I have seen them working on me. And later on, I've been reluctant to talk about it for a long time. I really talked about it much later. But when I did, I had researched so many things already and started to believe. I was starting to better understand the spiritual and the material. At that point, this intense experience got its own place. The realization that I'm not my body. It's just a vessel. So, I lived through all of that, but I also needed a long time to recover. Yes, of course. Yes, I was a train wreck. Complete wreck. I was completely burned out. I had crashed and the body needed a year to recover. Because, I don't really want to get into it now but in those circles, I got tortured physically during my exit time. This was in order to make sure I would never break the contract of secrecy. So, I was taken for a certain amount of time, I was treated. All those factors together, just increased the stress I was experiencing. Literally running full speed towards my own end. Do you mean abductions, as well call it, or programming? No, they exposed me to certain types of torture. That makes sure you'll never damage anyone in that world. I didn't realize that back then, so this is all from hindsight. It did all happen that way. So the end of my first life was so extreme that I couldn't handle it anymore. I couldn't handle it anymore, in no way. However, my mind power was so strong, that it only happened with and to my own body. That was, well, I didn't know what to do anymore. There were no options left for me. So that is why sometimes I think, of course that is not true, but I wish, like so many colleagues, I had taken the drugs and alcohol route, at least my end would have been more gentle, because most of them are just dead by now. Even though I know there are more strawmen walking around, there are little still alive whom I knew back then. Most of them are already gone. Well I was dead too, but I'm still here. So, you still have something left to do? Yes, I suppose you could say that, but that is, I can't say in short, since, I don't know how long we have been talking, the world that I found myself in, if you have any specific questions, then I can answer them, but I had hoped to be more concise, but I just don't know how. Well, you have my gratitude for all you have shared. To me, it is still a very big deal. Ronald, you were previously mentioning the pyramid. I was talking about the top of this pyramid, 8,500 people. Could you tell us about how things operate up the nowadays? Yes. Certainly. These 8,000, 8,500 people make use of a monetary system, a financial monetary system, which we refer to as money and banks, used in our daily lives. So, the mechanism they use is indeed a system in the shape of a pyramid. So you have the top of 8,000 to 8,500 people, then the layer under them they have created an institution in 1930. This was done from the Netherlands called the BIS the Bank for International Settlements, with headquarters situated in Switzerland. They are the headquarters of the banks and of the financial system. The top 8,000, 8,500 people gives orders to BIS in Basel, from which it propagates downward through the system to be executed. 
We know Basel from the Basel agreements. It went wrong with the banks and then we got Basel 1, Basel 2, Basel 3. Some people have heard of the agreements or read about them in the newspaper. That's all about the BIS. So, as I just said, this came into existence in 1930, originating from the Netherlands. And already in 1931 was BIS recognized worldwide by basically all countries to be the headquarters of the financial world. Every central bank is a member of this BIS club. Which is a civil organization not a governmental one who have a headquarters agreement that describes in total what the BIS stands for. Its range of power, authorization level, operations and output. When you are reading in these documents what they stand for, they are available on their website, you see how they have incorporated all these rules, recognized worldwide, claiming their independency from Switzerland, the grounds their headquarters are on, are independent from the country. It also states their immunity. It also states they are above all worldly rules. Nobody can touch them, they have complete immunity. So, they have a complete immunity from everything on earth. Furthermore, they have their own police service, so you can't just go in yelling, you bastards, or something of the sort, because you won't get away with it. To be concise, it's a fully recognized, immune state, beyond the grasp of any rules, inviolable. This institute was also the location during World War I and before, in which the so-called enemies, the Nazis and their allies met up, in which they traded gold raided from Jewish people of states or other people. BIS is a club in which they are all friends. And these headquarters maintain the monetary system as it is and assures the amount of currency. At the so-called bottom of the pyramid, where all value is located at the bottom means real life there where people live, where the earth is, nature. And the real value at the bottom of the pyramid, is being extorted. They do this by using the financial system. Under the central bank, the BIS, we find the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, people can read about this in the newspapers, and the World Bank, these two institutes often help countries when needed. What they really do is create debt in these countries in such a way that they will never be able to pay it off. They actually calculate the amount needed in order to ensure this fact. Enabling them to increase the grip they have on a country or continent such as Africa which is rich in resources, very rich. Through their connections with friends, multinationals they can extort the value from the countries by allowing them to pay in kind, resources for the debt they'll never be able to resolve. So, they pay with labor, slave labor you could say I suppose. Yes, and the only requirement is buying off the top within such a country, blackmail them with children, or severance pay, you name it, you buy them off and then you own them. So, this was the first layer under BIS, the World Bank and IMF the next layer would be the central banks. Again all civil organizations, independent from governmental organizations, amongst which, nowadays, we have the Central Bank of Europe. 
We used to also have the national banks in this layer, but they have been demoted to being side offices of the Central Bank of Europe. Where do we find the city in this story? You mean the city of London, this is also a free state. As in Vatican City? Yes, Vatican City. There is also such a place in Washington, there are many free states in the world at the same level, like the BIS in Basel. Vatican Bank in Vatican City is an example of such a free state. When we take the city of London and we can speak of one of the biggest financial cores of the world, which for example determines the gold rate, they manipulate the gold rate on a daily basis, so they are able to fill people with money or empty them all together. This makes London City a core player in the financial world. They are a very important mechanism in the bigger scheme, when we are talking about the pyramid, because we were talking about the structure of the BIS in Basel. Then IMF and World Bank, then the central banks like the Federal Reserve in America and others. Then the regular banks, but also stock market centers. We are now talking about these free states with immunity from everyone. Free states where nothing and no one can do anything against this included the people working for these institutes. They also got immunity. Are they on the same level as BIS? No, BIS delegates the execution of instructions to the others, the headquarter of the headquarters. And from out of BIS all instructions are entered and set to all the layers below. All right, so also to the city. Yes indeed, they are all instructed from the top. So, to pick up from the regular banks, we just mentioned, under them we find the multinationals and then below we find the governments. And finally under them we find ourselves, the people, the real life, and one of the mechanisms they use, something we have accepted as normal, is the interest rate. In our society, money is created from a contract, based on debt. So, let us take this piece of paper. You go to the bank, we all are familiar with this principle, and ask for a loan or a mortgage, and you put your signature. The moment you do this, they create a debt on one side on your bank account and a credit on the other side. The credit goes to whatever you were trying to buy, car, house, etc. The debt is yours from now on, so out of nowhere they digitally created money. That's how they create all the money in the world, based on debt. That is only one part, this is an economy based on debt. But there's also a component that you could call usage costs, interest rates. Then in school with economics they teach you that there are savings on the opposite because someone worked really hard for it. So, it makes sense that he receives something for the money he lends to someone else, well, all of that isn't true. But what it is about is that this interest rate of 5% a year on average, was not created in the contract of debt. This means they have to take the interest out of some other contract, which causes the start of the global shortage, leading to competition all over the world and virtually creates all misery we experience amongst the people, in society. There is a continuous stream of this 5% interest rate that is taken from the bottom of the pyramid and whisked away to the top capital. When we do the math, 5 times, 10 years. After 10 years it is 50%, after 20 years a 100%. The shortages just keep increasing. To solve this they keep creating debt contract based on debt contract worldwide in all the layers, people, government, companies, etc. 
Debt on debt on debt, to cover the holes they whisked away 5% leaves. They are sucking the real value, resources, out of the world, like a bunch of vampires. That is what it is. In 20 years, they already stole 100% of the real value. This is what causes the national debts to increase, you will see everywhere, with individuals, that those debts keep growing. Then reports start showing up, like Oxfam Novib, after a global research did show that 8 people own as much as half the people in this world. How is that possible? It's not just speculation, it's the interest rate that takes the real actual value and adds it to the capital at the top. Last thing about this pyramid, you have rules, laws, armies, police services, fiscal services, name them, you have all these rules and laws and organizations on the other side, that ensure the bottom layer, real life, stays where it is, to make sure they don't end up with 7 million in the top. They don't want that so it's tightly closed. As long as people don't realize how this works, how they're deceived, how they're being robbed, how the real value, their value, is taken away from them to enrich the rich even further, as long as people don't see this, as long as they are not aware, nothing will change. Then I am talking about the old world, because all misery on earth is a business model. Syria, is a business model, it is about resources and some other interests. All of that is being orchestrated by one organization, the top of the pyramid and delegated through them. As you said earlier follow the money, because eventually that is what it's all about. Yes, very much so. So when you see how this value extraction, I've brought an article from NOS, Dutch news channel, which anyone can Google. If you Google this, gas prices increase inflation. Apart from the fact that the title is already incorrect, it is very interesting to read. The article is from February 9, 2017. Most of the things they are describing, is a distortion of the truth. Because if the prices of gas increase, it does not mean that it actually has more cost. No, it means our salary is worth less. Our currency is being depreciated, purchasing power decreases, that is what inflation is. So, what is fine to be very remarkable is the nuggets of truth we do get from them, even though it is from NOS, because it states, with the adjusted inflation rate of 1.6%, the Netherlands are up to speed again with the European inflation which averages 1.8% a year. On average, your salary is worth 1.8% a year less, which decreases our purchasing power yearly. This is exactly why in the past one single person with a good job could sustain the entire family and two full-timers can hardly make ends meet and are being trapped in a crisis. Because 1.2 million people in the Netherlands are in debt and won't get out of it anymore. It's not some wild tale. And then the important part, the European Central Bank, you know the one on the top of the pyramid, has tried for the last two years, by use of policies for low interest rates and continuous money printing, they create 80 billion of new money every month, using contracts based on debt contracts to increase the inflation within the Eurozone to the desired level of almost 2% per year. Hence, they are stealing 2% a year of our labor and time of production which we are receiving a salary for. They are consciously stealing 2% a year and then they say the prices are increasing, that is a blatant lie, our money is depreciated. That is what they are doing. So next to the interest rate, we find to be normal, is inflation another way and inflation is theft. So they extract value in multiple ways. Now we are talking about the financial mechanism the elite uses to extort value. 
through a financial monetary system, an economic system. They do so through the banks. The banks being the key to this process. We are talking about the SN, citizen service number, I sometimes say, service, I think is it a citizen service number or a citizen slavery number? If people realize where we find ourselves and see we are in a rat race of competition and scarcity, they should research the financial system that only services to better the rich and keep the poor miserable. Interest, a take-home message, interest, according to statistics calculated by economists, is paid by 80% of the people during their entire lifetime. 10% receives some interest and pays some, and the other 10% only receives interest. So this already illustrates the problem at hand. The main portion of humans pays the system their entire lives, and a small portion takes from the system. National debt, over the last 30 year we pay 13 billion in interest per year, for national debt. From the taxes paid by citizens. 13 billion of this created money goes to privately owned banks. This again based on money, created out of nothing, with a contract of debt in which our state happily engages. The government happily plays along and pays the privately owned banks the usage fees. If we would keep this 13 billion a year, average over 30 years, we would not need to economize anymore. So when people realize this seemingly innocent interest rate is actually the big corrupter causing all the trouble. Moreover, when the Catholics were still ruling Europe, interest rates were illegal and punishable by death. The death penalty for charging interest. It is a biggie in holy books as it is described. It is actually still illegal. Yes, Islamic banking. Unfortunately, nowadays several new calculation models are established which is also a form of interest charging. But the pure Islamic banking was the last to stay away from charging interest. The funny thing about Islamic banking is that 50% of the people are Islamic at all. It is a purely ethical, morally, based on principle decisions to bank without interest rates. These people are aware of the damage it causes. Meanwhile politicians look away, I understood the court of audit does not even have access to what ECB does. No. They are privately owned organizations and have so much authority and protection, that they don't require anything at all. Then what is the court of auditors and the government doing in our names? These kinds of institutions serve the political system, for example the elections they calculated budgets of parties and their plans. You could use it for good, but you can also use it to serve certain agendas. During the election period, they calculated things in such a way to show how extremely well we were all doing. Things are going better, new jobs, all things to show how amazing things are now. As soon as the elections are done and over with, we will start hearing about economizing once again. However, the court of audit doesn't even have access to data of banks, they have no right to it. Well officially. Companies do have yearly reports, but you are talking about a level in which decisions are made that are not made public. Exactly. Yes, you are right. But that is true for BIS, there is another mechanism, well many others, you've got ESM, European Stability Mechanism. The House of Representatives, I think in 2012, gave 100 votes to create this. ESM is an institute that is again fully protected, employees are indemnified, they are immune. The organization is allowed to do what they want, nothing is publicly available, as an entity is sort of a free state.
This organization, empowered by the representatives, ministers, the government, was initially made to save countries which soon became banks instead. And this mechanism, the ESM mechanism, ensures that within seven days, any required amount of money, be it 10 billion or 100 billion, has to be delivered by the Netherlands within seven days. So if ESM decides it wants to save, for example, Greece, and they need money, they can assign Germany, the government in the Netherlands gives us 10 billion. Then that has to be sent within seven days to ESM so they can execute their program to save, in this case, banks. So if we take Greece as an example, a lot of money has been sent the through ESM not even 5% has actually arrived in Greece, most of it has directly gone through Greece to German, French and Dutch banks. They were all betting on Greece and made sure they could buy themselves out, out of stocks on Greece. So they have freed themselves through these mechanisms. And all that money is coming from us, from our tax money and national debt and so on. All these mechanisms what we are talking about now, ensure we remain where we are and impoverish more and more and of course the rich getting richer. En rijk alleen maar rijker wordt. Dus, um, Zie daar jouw taak. So, that is where you find your task to inform the people. Ja, dat yes, doen we ook. that is why we currently dus give lectures in the Netherlands and Belgium. In Nederland en in België. That is not just me but also colleagues. We are slowly arriving at how to solve this part. Ja. Indeed yes. Because it is all fun, well it isn't really fun but when you get to the bottom of how this world functions, the world I found myself in, and how it still bulldozes over everything, making the world worse and worse with all its programs and agendas, all business models, that includes vaccinations, all of a sudden, a pandemic arises, and the Dutch run to their doctor to get their shots not to get sick. That is getting less by the way. Yes, fortunately there is a tendency downward. I remember this other not even existing pandemic. With the former minister Klink, who later had to, after everybody got swine flu or avian flu vaccinations. Of some sort, anyway, very scary. H1N1 or something. Yes, and it turns out he still had many surplus vaccines, and it had to be processed through highly chemical disposal mechanisms, because of the hazard it formed to all life, to nature. But shooting it into people was not a problem of course, anything else was not done, because it was life-threatening. However, that is just a business model, looking at the stocks, after the pandemic, of pharmaceutical industry in the months afterwards. Well, they had peak months. They had billions in extra profit. So, multinationals also play a key role in this game. You can determine this, not just me, many academics have been reporting this as well. The multinationals and banks have become the dominant players in this world, on this earth. They use all these systems and mechanisms we just mentioned, the free states, that is very important, because we granted them the required immunity. It is the ideal situation for psychopaths. Like a father saying to his child, do whatever you want, I'll take care of it. In a way, it all boils down to that. They get away with anything, it's the world's biggest villain's wet dream they have created. That is what leaves us in the situation we are in now. Brussels currently dictates over 80% of what happens in the Netherlands. There are currently all sorts of campaigning to get everybody to vote. 
which is to make you agree with the current system and to instill the illusion that we live in a democracy to make one feel like they have contributed to the democracy and real change is about to happen but if people are looking back at the last 40 years what has actually changed which of the political topics have actually made a change in the campaign it's the mask they are wearing that changes the core remains because nothing of the people who are dedicating themselves to these parties, they are decent people that stand for their principles and do want to make a change. However, as soon as the coalition has to be formed, they are sworn in not on the people, but on the higher powers, for example in this case, the king. That is where the change lies, that doesn't take many words. If you look at how ministers rule the country and how things only worsen for most of us, except for a few. And you also look at the political careers of these people and where they end up. I end up thinking, okay. The literal meaning of minister is servant. But who are you serving if I look at the pattern of your career during your service but also afterwards? I mean minister de Jager, used to be minister of finance during the period of the ESM approval. I don't see him walking around as postman. I know he has a top position in that world now. I don't begrudge him that position. But it does tell you something. It tells you something. Had it been only one case, you would have been, well okay, such can happen, but it follows a pattern. You see a small group of people. That's why I call the governments puppets, and therefore they are also the connections between us and the powers. They are playing their role. They sell a part of themselves otherwise we would not see this pattern. Then we would actually see the promises during the campaigns, after the elections being fulfilled. Look at all the election programs, who says we need to completely change the economic financial monetary system. That we need to get rid of the banks as we know them currently. I found one. But if we talk about the major players who are on stage now, because even Forum for Democracy can count themselves lucky if they manage only one office, let alone the political parties you really expect something from, like big changes. They are under the radar and they even do not come to the light. While we see the citizen initiatives who have a very pure program that will really serve us in there, which is what it is all about. And having potential? And do have the potential, absolutely. So the movement of the people is there, from out of a citizen movement, you could say. I think one of the parties participating the elections, which actually carries that name in my view it is called Burger Beijing. Well, if you see those programs, I think, wow, they should have those 140, 150 government offices. They don't get any attention. Then we'd have real representation of the wish of the people and the system would actually serve us a system for all of us. But that doesn't happen. Why? The current powers don't allow it and manipulate everything in such a way that nothing will fundamentally change. Using the media. Because they don't get any attention in the mainstream. People don't even know these parties exist which is obviously a serious matter. It is only locally, here and here, a bit of this and a bit of that. They don't have the means to break through. You don't only need support, you also need money. You need connections to get into the mainstream. After part one of our interview, quite a lot has happened. 
it went viral worldwide. In the meantime, we have Spanish subs, Finnish, French. Italy did publish the video, it is really incredible. What happened to you afterwards? Yes, I never experienced such in my life, it even did not come to my mind that this would happen. I was actually doing something very different when we did the interview and perhaps it is good to mention this. I experienced a very heavy and intense life, until today, which has split into a first life and a second life, a real death. And, I've actually decided for myself the last two and a half years to do something with the trauma I have incurred. And there are quite a few, because I got stuck. Again? I got stuck in myself, yes. So, I've been lucky enough to embrace a specialist who was able to deal with trauma processing. And from there I made little steps which eventually led me to share with the audience. Just like we did. Courageous. That is a lot of processing. But it also has a lot to do with my new life, which has been running for some 22 years now. I started a positive life, I became a social entrepreneur and I am very committed to life. And I saw, especially from the Netherlands. The Netherlands, as you might say, is quite a country of parochialism and where often a culture is expanding from out of ignorance, but especially from out of fear. And I already saw it on forehand, because of the manifestations I am working on in my life, are becoming so big, worldwide, worn by humanity, that I already felt it. If I do not clear myself up inwardly, as well as outside myself, then unfortunately I know the Dutch people and their mentality too well. If something gets beautiful and becomes a success, it needs to be broken. That is apparently tradition in the Netherlands. There are only a few things that are praised in the Netherlands. Yes, if our soccer team wins a world championship, then we are all happy and that is positive. But when it comes to essential things, that are good for us, they often break you down. And I thought, if I get more clean inside and I become more and more strong through trauma processing just like the manifestation outside myself, the moment will come that the Dutch will show their nasty tendency, we are going to destroy it. Then you better clean your own slate completely, make everything clear, where you come from then they cannot do anything with it anymore. Because after all, it is not about me, it is about the manifestation. Because once a manifestation has been realized, I am going to start something else. So, that is the way I started. To get rid of it from within, it gave me a lot of relief. It freed me enormously, it was really a kind of birth. I also found it very intense. I have to say I have seen worldwide what has happened. In the meantime, I have heard that over 18 million people have watched the interview. Moreover, about part 2, I am not sure, but from part 1, which has been published before, more than 18 million. Part 2, who knows, some more, but perhaps the same. That was not just about me but also about the current power structure here on earth. The financial system, because people need to know about that. But I did not expect this to happen, I did not hope for this either. It was more something for myself and for what I am creating. Because I'm dealing with a lot of people around me. I have 5,000 people in some manifestation gathered around me, 
in five different countries. I bear a lot of responsibility for that, because I once started an initiative, started a manifestation. Perhaps later on we can go into that and what it is all about. But I thought, it is not going to happen that, because of the dark period in my past, they are going to break it down. Because trust is hard to gain but easy to lose in the Netherlands. All based on fear, but okay. People don't even know what they are talking about. Where does that come from? Are you talking about the fact that this is something human or is this a matter of conscious control of a higher power structure, that the good things will be destroyed? I did. I think it was in part one, and otherwise it was in part two, but I did mention, and it seems almost a commercial, the protocols of Zion. The protocols of the wise elders of Zion. And I still believe that if people are going to read it, they will better understand what they are in. Yet I have received comments from people who have read it and they were overwhelmed. Overwhelmed, yeah. Really? Wow. We really live in a time what is written in there, while it is already an old document. So, more and more people begin to understand where all the reactions, also from us, come from. Because we are talking about a matrix. Once they produced a movie about it, it even became a trilogy, three parts. Then I think, Wow, it is just a movie, but it shows as clear as possible where most people live in, in a kind of dream that is not real. And what if you are part of the dream and then I come up with a story like this, it really happened. I have to say, as far as I know, more than 95% or 96%, which is a rough estimate, is overwhelmingly positive. They are incredibly positive. Do you know that even for you people are praying, worldwide, that teams are formed to support you, to be able to continue your work? Yes, that is beautiful. It is incredible what has happened. On the other hand we have also seen poison coming our way, the arsenic, the biological meal was the reaction, with a touch of arsenic in it to break it down. Most of the time it is an energetic mechanism, that sometimes works through them without even knowing. It works on their fear, because when I am speaking the truth, then it becomes a real possibility that the world and the reality they live in, their comfort, is going to shake. Is breaking down, yes. And that is scary because change is scary. So, you are already afraid and you got some more fears. Then it is far more easy. And they tried to do that to me in the meantime. To break me down, and trying to prove that I am a liar, a fantasist, and mention the whole range of what you can imagine. For not accepting the truth, because I am speaking the truth. This is the reason why I am married to a woman for more than 10 years, for this. I say what I say, I do what I do, and that is right. Because I have not so much to hide. I am hiding something about my old life, my first life. That is pure protection for myself but also for many others. But over the last 22 years that I came back and really became who I am, You can ask me anything. Yes, because that is the hardest part, what you are telling me now. You cannot talk about those things, out of protection of yourself and others. Yes. I understand that very well. But a lot of people are using that as an argument to say that you are a fantasist. That it is not true what you are saying and that you apparently have another agenda. How do you look at it and what can you say about it? Yes, I get that very well. I mean, what they ask, is, I know someone, who said, give me a curriculum vitae. Yes, and I look at it and I think, boy oh boy, how can you ask such a thing? 
I mean, I cannot. First I have no CV, I was always an entrepreneur. But how can I? How can I write a CV about my first life? That's self-employment. Also including cars, textile, the ladies' fashion line, in import and export, those were the top layers. Do you really think back then, that I was a saint? Hello. I was just a top criminal, okay? How bad do you want me to tell myself that I was bad? Do I need to tell that I am a murderer, which I am not? I mean, what do they want me to tell about that? I cannot tell anything. And quite simple. Everything I say for the people who are still alive, I will draw them along with me. Actually, it comes down to over and out. And all of that because I need to prove that it is like it is? One can also look into worldwide investigations and testimonies that already exist, because I am not the first one. It is a lot worse. This is timeless. Once there was a rebel, he was a carpenter, he performed miracles here on earth. He told us who he was. He was the son of the highest supreme. Yes. He did miracles and they still did not believe him. No. You know who he was? He came from the devil. He was a Satanist. Yes? How much more do people need to know to see what is going on here on earth? How much? How much? And I do understand what they are talking about. Of course, I can understand that. They cannot understand what I am talking about, because it is not part of their life. That is not possible. I mean, it is the same with the breaking point you asked for, which was very difficult for me. I was invited. Do you really think they say hey Ronald, we have a party, come on, we are going to chop little children? No, of course it does not work like that. How can you think like that? Such is a very careful route, involving two of my colleagues who joined the inner circles, who invited me to also join the inner circle, because I should gain more strength, more power. That was a trust relationship that they have built up with me in the long run, and they thought I was ready for this. How could they know that this was a trigger for me? That was not the intention. So, it is nonsense to think that, just like on a normal Saturday evening when everybody is going out, that I ended up on a massacre with children. Those are just images people create, while for me the invitation, the truth about that, already gave me the shock I could not handle. And we are purely speaking about an inner circle, from a religion that is sick. And we all feel shocked about that. But then I have another example. Also about children. Because if we need to throw it all out there, because people stay where they are, that is the problem. The good people. It is not the bad people, there are only a few. Bad people do their thing, but it is the good people, worldwide, who do nothing. For a very long time, and I am a little angry with them. Rightly so. Because I was still in my youth, between 15 and 20 years old. Via family, first line, I heard stories from nurses who were sent to India for a mission. For development assistance over there. Those people. I am trying to control myself. Those people, were burnt out after four or five years, completely traumatized, nurses back in the Netherlands, no one was allowed to know. But what was this all about? Children. Again. Every time, children. Organ trafficking. We just think it is normal for a baby to be saved, but where do these organs come from? And those children are still alive the moment they remove their organs. Those nurses could not cope with it anymore. India. I am not sure if this is still going on right now. World, stand up. Go find out. Organ trafficking. Children. No one is talking about that. No one is taking action. Those, Satanists, 
Fuck them. That is just a pathetic tiny little group. Organ trafficking, worldwide. The God Mammon. How much more shit do you need to get from me? I now hear stories, including lawsuits, in England, about the rape of young girls on a massive scale and the culprits are acquitted. We do not protect our own children. What kind of a sick world is this? This is our future. And I can testify, start with damaging little children from early on and your world becomes even sicker. It is a license to a third world war and a total destruction of humanity, if we continue the way we do now with our youth with our children. And then they say that I am a liar? A fantasist? Look around and wake up. You don't need me. You don't need me. Not at all. I might be so far, finally in my life, after all these therapies and processing, that I stand up for the children. Because I care for them. Very much. And you were one yourself? Yes. You know how it is? Yes. For two years they got me completely worn out. Back then I have had it with my dad. Then, through the Child Protection Board, I was placed in a sheltered home to protect me. Then I got so-called loving caregivers for two years. Yes. I even did not know what it was, sex. I did not even know. For two years long. Then you cry out for your daddy and your mommy, while you actually come out of hell. But rather hell than this. Yes? I know what is going on in this sick world, I've lived through it myself. Tell me I am a liar. Go and look in the mirror. Who is lying here? You. It is you. You don't want to see the world as it is. I promised to control my emotions today, to keep it nicely monotonous, as it should be, but I can't. I am who I am. And I am so committed to life, that is my mission. That became my mission, my life task. Good management of all life, that is my mission. For the children. And you needed that trigger? Yes. That is why we are here. I have nothing to do with all those people. I can understand them. But I will ask, please, look inside yourself. Why does it trigger you when you see me and hear me? And with all I have to say to you, what is going on within yourself? What is being touched? Why do you come in defense? Why are you in denial? Why do you need it from your mind, to burn me down? Because we are talking about that now. A small part considered it necessary. The mass does not. But a small part thinks it is necessary. What is it? What is this in yourself that you need to do this? Take a look at it, be honest with yourself. What is your agenda? Do you really want humanity to live in duality forever? Or do you want us to gather together? Because that is possible. I am already working on it. It is getting bigger and bigger. It is like a virus they cannot destroy. It is a virus of unconditional love. That is what we are spreading. In which you do not have to prove who you are but just being you. I am who I am, and for fun I showed you my passport, so you can watch it. You can even go to special services to check out if it is false. But hello. I am just here and I stand. You just said you have no CV, neither from your past. You made it very clear why that isn't how it is. But still, a number of questions have been raised, especially after the first interview. The questions we have received are for example, when did Ronald work at the stock exchange, because it is nowhere to be found. No. You cannot find much about my whole first life. Neither about my second life. I am not the type of guy being active on the internet just like the whole herd. 
Most people are careful with their privacy, but in the meantime, I see them sharing literally everything on the internet. The level I played on and where I come from. If you would like to investigate those circles, you actually will not find anything. We do not exist on the internet. Finally, for fun, because I was busy with the manifestation and it was needed to be found on the internet. Together with my partner, we established in 2008, the family Bly. And the funny part was, the thought behind it, was, if you are going to become one family, like little companies, entrepreneurs, individuals, you unite in one family. Then you can organize a manifestation, like I used to do in the social society with each other, from, for, and through each other. If you became a member of the family, that was our thought. Then you got the opportunity to add the adoptive name Bly, behind your own name. So, I became a member and with me many more, because you're able to find them on the internet. They had the opportunity, if they like, for example like with me, Ronald Bernard, so that became Ronald B. Bly. So that is why I created an account with a pseudonym for the social media like, Facebook and LinkedIn. To have an account, to be able to host the manifestations of importance, like new organizations. Because without a private account you are not allowed to do this. So, I was, except for a very small and lost article from another project, not to be found on the internet. My wife is also not to be found on the internet, and there are many in my circles not to be found on the internet, because we do not feel the need to share our privacy and a whole private life on the internet. That is our right. Yes. So, there's not much about us to find. On the other hand, that is the funny part, when you see the masses on the internet. Somebody signs up or whatever, through Facebook or I don't know what, to their children, everything and all, their birth date, what they are doing day by day, the name of the child, when it is born, you got everything to know from people through the internet. That is up to them. Publicly owned. What is it? We are owned by the government. Yes, but we are very cooperative, aren't we? Indeed. I mean, everybody is talking about their privacy, but they throw everything out in public, but we are not like that. And we don't do that. So, you cannot find a lot about us on the internet. But back to the CV, because a curriculum is quite a theme in the Netherlands, at least in some particular circles. I would like to repeat. I corresponded with some guy. I have indicated that I do not have a CV, because my whole life I was an entrepreneur, I never needed to apply for myself. The second thing I indicated is, I will never write a CV about my first life. That makes no sense at all, because everything I should write down, are indications of the deeper layers. Because everything I did, official companies, also had a substratum. Yes? A lot of things that could not stand the light of day were played out in those deeper layers. I did not just get in the financial world by coincidence. Perhaps I did not sufficiently explore this in the first part of the interview but you did not just get a seat automatically on the stock exchange. It is not like this oh, we have a seat for sale. It is quite naive to think like that. So, to avoid that from that period, because we are talking about, we are talking about a period from 1982, I have to dig deep. 1982 until the end of 1994. So, we are talking about 12 years, in which I was very busy and active in all forms as an entrepreneur with deeper layers that did not stand the light of day. There are many interests involved from a lot of people. I will never make it known. Besides, neither I cannot, for example, 
the people who tortured me, do you really think that I can make a phone call, that is also impossible but in case of, because we all need witnesses, do you really think they say, yes, that's right, I did this and that to him? And do you really think that people who made exchanges with me to ruin other countries will say, yes, of course we did that, we liked to do that? No. That does not work like that. There is nobody in my circles who has the feeling or the need, if they are still alive anyway, to testify about that. I can tell you something else, when I crashed down, revived to life again, the crying mother, after that I came in several private clinics for more than a year to recover. They had to deal with a professional oath, the oath of secrecy. Finally, as they saw my internal injuries, just everything what was wrong, they began to wonder what had happened. Then, yes, it still is a difficult part. You have to experience it yourself to know. It is a bit the same as living in Syria nowadays and half your family is shot to pieces. You are suffering seriously. It takes a long time to process trauma. Yes, sure. But, it is not real, right? Those people are bastards. But okay. I think those are really bastards. But I know. The consolation is that all strikes back. They themselves are deficient. Everything strikes back. Because I have no remorse, I think it is just bastards behavior and I can understand that very well. They must listen inwardly. Because there is a lot to heal. But when it comes to recovery, the doctors asked me what had happened to me. Then I told them the truth just like I do now. Do you know what they did? They called out for all kinds of specialists. Psychiatrists, psychologists. Everybody had to look into my mind, because this cannot be true. You are describing a movie. The fantasist. Yes. Then finally, because they made a lot of diagnoses, I actually found it humorous. I thought gosh, all of them are smart and intelligent scholars, professors, all of which make diagnoses, while I am just speaking the truth but no one believes me. Then I gave permission for a few loved ones from my most inner circle, trusted relationships. I gave permission to interview them. A few weeks later, I still remember the white coats with their files, entering the room dazed. We are sorry Ronald. We cannot help you. Your trauma is so serious. We cannot do that. At last someone believed me. People do not know the world where I come from. Most do not. No, which is also relatively small. Yes. In relation to the matrix everyone lives in. It's a bit like in that movie, there were also not so many who lived outside. But they lived in reality. The Wizard of Oz, and his tiny little friends behind the curtain. Yes, sorry I cannot expose everything. Yes. I do not only consider myself. Children are very important to me, because I also received comments like, yes, you should have gone to the government. You should know how I have gone through a great deal with the government. The government does not serve us at all. And what was I supposed to say? They invited me. For what? Where is the evidence? Who would believe me at once, while others do not believe me? There are no comments now, it ended up everywhere. Also with the authorities. It is rather serious, because the things I am talking about are from long ago. But if I see what is going on, well, I do not want to say on a daily basis, but still very often is in the news. What is going on with little children? 
It is not all about child sacrifices or child abuse, donor trade, organ trafficking. It is about so much more. 17,000 children are only dying of hunger and thirst every day. Are we all made out of concrete? What is wrong with this world? I am very concerned from the heart. That is my inner driver and that is what is going to happen. Because I notice, and that is the beautiful part, that more and more people are standing up. And they understand more and more. We are the change.